Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Elizabeth Gale and I design patterns for book folding. Today we're going to fold my paw print design. I'll walk you step by step through the process and I'll put a link in the description to the website where you can get the pattern. This paw print is a great way to celebrate the love you share with your furry friend. And it also makes a fun gift for the animal lover in your life. So let's get started making one. What is book folding? Book folding is the act of marking and folding the pages of a book to create an image on the edges of those pages. Let me show you right here in this finished one. You'll see two pencil marks, one here and here. You can see the marks there. And then the paper is folded on those two marks. And then you turn the page and the process has been repeated on the next page. Two pencil marks, one here and here. And then the paper is folded from the top corner down and from the bottom corner up on those two marks. And you just continue that way, page after page, working a page at a time. And when you combine all your folded paper together, you have your finished paw print design. So the process looks complicated, but it's just that simple, marking and folding page after page throughout the book. And you can do it. Just work along with me and I'll show you how to do it. Let's get started. Let me show you the tools we'll be using. First, you'll need a pencil. I like to use a mechanical one so I don't have to stop all the time and go sharpen it. This one is made by Pentel. It's got a 0.5 millimeter lead, as you can see there. Next, you'll need a ruler. We will be using centimeters and millimeters instead of inches, so make sure you have a ruler that's at least 30 centimeters long. And you will need a piece of elastic, and this is going to act as a third hand while you're working to help you hold down the pages in the book. And this piece of elastic that I'm using is one inch wide and it's about 30 inches long. And you'll also need a large safety pin that you'll be putting on the end of it. I'll show you how that works later. Next, you'll need a bone folder. This is made from genuine sterilized bone. It helps you get nice crisp folds on the pages. It saves a lot of wear and tear on your fingernails, your skin, and your joints. And you can buy this made of plastic, but I wouldn't recommend it. The genuine bone slides much more smoothly on the pages and it won't damage them. And it's also much stronger than plastic. I mean, I can really push hard with this and it's not going to bend or give. So definitely go with the Genuine Bone Folder. It costs about six or seven dollars. It's not expensive. Uh, if you don't have a bone folder right now, you could use the back of a tablespoon or you can use your fingernail until you can get one of these. And then I also keep a little eraser on hand because you're going to make mistakes. It happens to me every time I'm folding a pattern. So I'll keep this nearby so I can erase my errant marks. This one is made by Statler and it's really gentle on the paper. Even if I push hard on the book pages, it doesn't do any damage, which is why I like this one from Statler. And I'll put links to all these tools in the description. So if you're interested in using exactly what I use, you can go right to them. You know, that's one of the things I like most about book folding. You don't have to go out, spend a bunch of money on special supplies or special tools. I mean, you probably have most of these things around your house. And if not, you could get all of this for $25 or so. Book folding is an easy hobby to get into. You don't have to spend a bunch of money. Let's look at the pattern. I'll put a link in the description to the website where you can get it. The pattern comes as a digital file in PDF format. You download it to your computer, and then after you download it, you print it out. So I've got it printed out here. And in book folding, the pattern is a table of measurements that we're going to be working through page by page, and each line of the pattern is a page in the book. 
If we look at the cover page, it gives you information about this project. Here you'll see the method that we're going to be using, which is the traditional measure, mark, and fold method. Sometimes the book folding require cutting the pages, but this one does not. We'll only be measuring, marking, and folding. Next, you can see that the number of folds in the pattern is 168, which is 336 numbered pages. And let's talk about that for a second. In book folding, a fold with a capital F is a single sheet of paper in a book. It's a single page that is numbered on both sides. For example, in our sample here, we've got a page and a book. And the single sheet of paper in book folding is a fold. And of course, it's numbered on both sides. So one fold equals two numbered pages because each fold or sheet of paper is numbered on both sides. So if we look back at our pattern, you can see that's why this is doubled here. 168 folds equals 336 numbered pages. So the pattern is telling us we need to find a book with at least 336 numbered pages so that the paw print will fit into that book. If we look at the next line, you'll see the height of the book that you'll need is in centimeters, and you'll need one that's at least 22 centimeters tall. And when I say 22 centimeters, I'm talking about the cover of the book, not the pages inside. The pages of a book are always shorter than its covers. So when you're out looking for a book for the paw print, you'll need to find one that has covers that are at least 22 centimeters tall. Now it can be taller, this book that I used is about mm, 23 and a half centimeters tall. So if your book is a little bigger, that's fine. As long as it's at least 22 centimeters high, you'll be safe for the paw print pattern. Let's talk some more about selecting a book. Always use a hardcover book, not a paperback. The covers of a paperback are not heavy and strong enough to balance the weight of the paper once you've folded it. If you use a paperback, the finished book is going to tip forward and fall down and fall over. It will not be able to support the weight of the paper. So it's always use a uh, hardcover. I just found this book around my house. It happened to fit this pattern. This is a book about the history of Naples, Italy called Becoming Neapolitan by John A. Marino. But a good place you can find books is at a used bookstore or a thrift shop like Goodwill. And you can also check your local library. A lot of libraries will pull books out of circulation and then they will sell them to the public really cheap. So you could check there. And you could also go even to a retail chain like Barnes & Noble. They have a bargain section where you could get even a brand new book in pristine condition if you wanted to do that. And the pattern, as you remember, is telling me that I need to find a book with at least 336 numbered pages. So I looked at the back of this book and it has 342 numbered pages. So I know this pattern will fit this book. And it's at least 22 centimeters tall. If I measure the covers on this book, it is about 23 and a half centimeters tall. Not the pages inside, but the covers are what need to be measured. So I know that the paw print will fit into this book. Another thing I want to mention is the outside edge of the pages right here. Make sure that when you're out looking for a book, you choose one that doesn't have any damage, dirt, tears or ink marks on this edge of the paper because this is the edge that's going to show your design and if there are any flaws here they'll show up and detract from your work. Now if you've got some marks that are on the top edge of the book or marks that are on the bottom edge of the book that's okay but just make sure that these edges are clean. 
Now we need to calculate the start page. On what page of the book are we going to start measuring, marking, and folding? Now we can't start on the first page because we'll have a bunch of extra paper left over at the end of the book. As you can see in this sample, the design is centered and the extra pages that were in this book are evenly distributed on the front of the design and on the back of the design. So I have a formula that I'll teach you that you can use with whatever book you have that will center the paw print in your book. So let me show you that formula. First, write down the last numbered page that is in the book that you're going to use, the one that you've selected. So I'm going to turn to the last numbered page in my book. And it is page 342, right there. So I'm going to write down that number. Next, write down the numbered pages that are in the pattern. So we look back at the paw print pattern. You can see right here the numbered pages are 336. We don't want the number of folds, we want the number in the parentheses. So it's 336 numbered pages. So I'm going to write down 336. And then we're going to subtract 336 from 342. So when we do that, we get six extra pages. And we need to divide the six extra pages by two so that we can find the center of that. So six divided by two equals three. And three is gonna be my starting page. That's where I'm gonna start marking and folding the paw print in my book. So let me go through that quickly again. I wrote down the last numbered page in my book. Then I wrote down the numbered pages from the pattern, which I took right from here in the parentheses. Then I subtracted 336 from 342, and that gave me six extra pages. So I took that number, divided it by two, which equaled three, so three is my starting page. I'm gonna start marking and folding on page three of my book. And that's how you calculate the start page. If your start page ends up being an even number instead of an odd number like this, just go up to the next odd numbered page because you always have to start marking and folding on an odd numbered page. For example, let's say my start page ended up being page two. I would just move across from page two over to page three and I'd start working on page three. Because even numbers are always printed on the back of the page and odd numbers are always printed on the front of the page and you always need to start working on the front of the page. So if you end up with an even number as your start page, just move across and begin working on that next odd numbered page. Sometimes you may end up with a start page that ends in 0.5. If that happens, just round up to the next whole number. For example, if my start page here had been 2.5 instead of 3, I would just round that up to the next whole number, which would be 3. And then 3 would be my start page. So let me turn to page 3 in my book. And I like to put a sticky note on my start page just to keep track of it. That way if the book flips closed, I won't have to stop and find it again. Now we're ready to measure, mark, and fold. The fun part. So we're gonna put our elastic on the book. So turn to your start page that you calculated and loop your elastic around the cover and the pages that you will not be folding. Uh, the elastic will hold these pages down out of your way. And I'm putting it on pretty tight right here because as you work through the pattern, the pages are going to grow and grow and grow and so that you can adjust the safety pin as you work. So we're going to start with it pretty tight. Slide it under. Be careful not to stick yourself. There we go. 
you may have to adjust it a few times. And then I like to pull it under, get that out of the way. All right, now we're ready to measure, mark, and fold. Let's go to the pattern. And I like to keep the first page in view where I can see the picture. That way you can make sure you're folding the design correctly. We're going to start with fold number one. It has two measurements of 11.0 and 12.7 centimeters. So those are gonna be our first two marks on the first fold. And remember that in book folding, a fold is a single sheet of paper in your book. So we're gonna place those first two measurements on this first fold or sheet of paper. So let's do that. So place your ruler, the top edge, lined up at the top of the page, the zero right at the top, and just a little bit back from the edge on this side. And we're gonna do our first two measurements, which are 11.0 and 12.7 centimeters. So line up the ruler. 11.0, right there. And then the second measurement, 12.7 centimeters. Come down to 12, and then 0.7 millimeters, so 12.567. Put the second mark right there. So those are our first two marks of fold number one. 11.0, 12.7. And before you lift the ruler, move over to the pattern and put a little check mark on the first measurement and the second measurement. And that way you know you've completed those. And set the ruler aside, turn that page, slip it under your elastic, and now we're ready for fold number two. The first measurement for fold number two is 10.6 centimeters, and the second measurement is 13.0 centimeters. So let's mark that. Get the ruler, line up with the top of the page, a little back from the edge, and we're gonna mark 10.6, 13.0. Come down to 13.0 centimeters right there. And then check that off on your pattern before you lift the ruler. And let's go on to fold number three. The measurements for fold number three are 10.3 centimeters and 13.3 centimeters. So let's mark that. And line up your ruler. And we're gonna mark 10.3, 13.3. Come down to 10, one, two, three. And then 13.3, 13, 13 1, 2, 3. And then move over to your pattern. Check those off. You know you've completed those. And now we're ready to go on to fold number four. The measurements for fold number four are 10.0 centimeters and 13.4 centimeters. So let's mark that on the next page. Put your ruler at the top, zero lined up at the top of the page. Come down to 10.0, like that. And then 13.4, 13, one, two, three, four. Right there. And then move over to the pattern, check those off. Set the ruler aside, turn the page, put it under your elastic. And we're ready for fold number five. The measurements for fold number five are 9.8 centimeters and 13.6 centimeters. Let's mark those next. 
And you can see this next page in the book has a full illustration on this page, but that's fine. Just go ahead and mark it as if it were text. Line up the ruler the top, at the top of the page. And we're going to mark 9.8, 13.6. Let's do that. 5, 6, 7, 8. Right there. And then come down to 13.6, 13, 5.6. 13, I know it's hard to get it exactly right on the millimeter marking. Just do the best you can. It's hard for me too, but it doesn't have to be perfect. The reason I use the metric system to design patterns instead of using inches, like an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch, is because when you use centimeters and millimeters, you get a finer detailed design, a more pleasing design overall. So that's why I like to use the metric system in the pattern instead of using inches. You'll get used to it if you're not used to working with it. I had to get used to it. But I like the detail that it gives the finished product. Well, let's go back to the pattern and check off those two measurements before you lift the ruler. Tuck that page under your elastic. All right, we've completed five folds and now I'll show you how to fold those pages. So let's turn back to our start page which was page three right here, and put the paper and the cover in the elastic, the paper we will not be marking and folding. And we're back to our original start page, and now we're ready to do some folding. And for folding, I like to use this thin metal ruler made by Westcott. It's very flexible. You can put pressure on it. It's not going to break, and it's got a nice cork backing so that it won't slip on the paper. And I'll put a link to it in the description if you'd like to pick one up. But it's great for folding because it is so thin and flexible. To start folding, place this edge of the ruler against the spine of the book firmly. And then place the opposite edge of the ruler on this first mark that we made from the first fold, which was 11.0. So put the opposite edge on that mark. And I'm going to lift up the book so you can see exactly where I'm putting the ruler. See there are our first two marks and we're going to put the opposite edge of the ruler on that first mark. I'll take the top corner of that page, fold it over the ruler like that, score it with your finger, and then set the ruler aside. And you're going to take your bone folder, hold this flap down with your other hand, and use your bone folder just make that crease on the outer edge of that mark and then smooth it away from you, just like that. Let the paper roll out the way it wants to. Then we're going to take the ruler again and we're going to do our second mark. So put it up against the spine and then we're going to put the opposite edge of the ruler on that second mark right there. And then take the bottom corner of the paper, fold it up over the ruler, score it, set the ruler aside, pick up the bone folder again, and just get the edge of that fold right on the outer edge of the mark, smooth it, and then use the bone folder to let it roll towards you. You're holding it with your thumb here and then smoothing it with the bone folder. All right, we've completed fold number one. Let's go on to fold number two. I'll tuck that under our elastic. And for fold number two, we had a measurement of 10.6 and 13.0. So we're going to place the ruler in the spine like that. And we're going to put that opposite edge on the first mark like that. Fold the top corner back over the ruler. Score it. Set the ruler aside. And come in with the bone folder and just work the point of the paper until it's at the outer edge of that mark and then smooth away from you and let the paper roll the way it wants to. And I'm going to do the second mark. Notch that into the spine. 
put the opposite edge of the ruler on the mark, pull the corner of the paper up over, pour, and come in with the bone folder, smooth it a few times, and you finished fold number two. Let's keep going, fold number three, notch the ruler into the spine firmly, and put it on your first mark, fold that back over, oops, score it, use your bone folder, get a nice point there, hold it here, smooth away from you. Ruler into the spine, pull it down to the mark, and bring the corner up and over, score, put the ruler aside, and bone folder to finish. And then we're going to tuck that under and we're going to go on to fold number four. Place the ruler against the spine, go to that first top mark, which was a measurement 10.0, fold the paper back over the ruler, score it, and use your bone folder, get that to the outer edge of the mark, smooth it. You can hear me knock that up against the spine to make sure it's tight, and then I pull it down to the mark like that, and pull that up and over. Score and finish with the ball folder. Let that just roll towards you the way it wants to. And I've got one more that we marked, fold number five, which were measurements of 9.8 and 13.6. Knock that in. to finish and the ruler pushed that fold up a little bit so I'm gonna give that one another swipe with the bone folder there there we go I tuck that under the elastic all right so we finished the first five folds so you just continue working through the pattern beginning with fold number six and if we look back at the book you can see these are the first five folds we've done right here. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see we're just at the left edge of that left pad on the paw print are the ones we've just done right there. So I'm going to continue on and work through five more folds so you can just get an idea of the rhythm of the measuring, marking, and folding. I finished measuring, marking, and folding up through fold number 10. And so you can get an idea of the way it's going. We're just getting up to this fatter part of the left pad of the paw print. You can see there, let me show you on the finished one. You can compare just up to that fatter part there on both of those. You can see. So you can just keep working through the pattern and you can do 
10 folds at a time, 20 folds at a time. I usually get on a roll and I'll mark an entire sheet and then I'll go back and fold those pieces of paper in the book. Then I'll go on to the next page of the pattern and do the same thing. Here is the second page. I would just go through, measure and mark all of these, then go back and fold all of these. So just keep working until you reach the end of the pattern and it goes all the way up to 168 folds and your last two measurements on that fold will be 10.8 and 12.3 centimeters which will be this last fold here, small one there and then you'll have your finished paw print. Here's a bonus tip. Sometimes you'll have a fold that crosses the spine like this when you fold the paper. This happens when the marks are either high or low on the page. For example, in the paw print, this occurs at fold number 22, which is this little fold right here. And you can see how it's low on the page right where the bottom pad begins. The measurements for that are 15.8 and 17.2 right on that fold. So let me show you how to fix it when it crosses the spine. I've got those two measurements from fold 22 already marked right here on my page. And let me show you in the pattern where those are. Here's fold number 22 right here. And I've got marked 15.8 and 17.2 centimeters. So go ahead and fold as you normally would with your ruler against the spine and the opposite edge on that first mark. Pull it back, score it, set the ruler aside, and let's work it to that edge. And to fix this cross over here, you have two options. You can either fold it back like this and crease it with the bone folder. Or you can take a pair of sharp scissors and just snip it off like this. Either option works, whether you fold it back or snip it off. And that's how you fix a fold that crosses the spine. As you work, it's up to you whether or not you want to erase your pencil marks as you fold. I just leave mine on there. They don't bother me. And once I get the entire paw print folded, you can't see them. But some people like to erase their marks, so that's up to you. Now here's an important tip. When you're completely finished folding your book, let your book rest for a few hours with the back cover on the table, just like this. Let it stay closed so that the pattern can compress back down because as you work through the book, the spine is going to stretch out a lot. I mean, when you get all the way to the end of the pattern, you're gonna be back here and your book will be stretched open. And if you don't let it rest like this, the right side of the paw print is gonna be stretched open and distorted. So just let it sit like this with the back cover for a few hours, and then you can come back and set it upright, and it'll look great. It took me about three or four hours to fold this paw print. I like to take my time and be precise and just enjoy the process but you may be able to do it faster or take longer. You know, if you're new to book folding, just be patient with yourself. It's gonna take some time for you to get used to the techniques, but you'll get there. You can do it. Just work a page at a time and you'll be able to make some beautiful book art that you'll be proud of. I think you'll enjoy it, I love it. I hope you'll pick up the pattern and give this one a try. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please take a moment to hit the like button and give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. God bless you and thanks for watching.